Is chatter and grinding giving you difficulties? I'm going to run through one way, uh, very quickly, how you can reduce your risks of chatter, eliminate your chatter, just by changing the stiffness of your spindle. And we're going to talk quickly about how you do that. Going live, my name is Jeff Badger. I call myself the grinding doc. I've devoted my whole professional life to grinding. Did a PhD in grinding. And then for the last 20 plus years, I have spent years of my life on the shop floor of companies in 30 plus countries, working on grinding, studying grinding, measuring, trying new wheels, trying new parameters, reading the academic literature, applying the academic literature, see what works, see what doesn't, succeeding, failing, succeeding again. And now a large part of my work is educating other people about grinding. And that's what we're going to talk about today. One very, very small aspect of chatter. Chatter is a big, nasty subject, but we're going to talk about one small aspect about it and how you can reduce your chatter risk or maybe eliminate that chatter. So let's say we've got a wheel. Let's say we've got a spindle and that, that wheel is sticking out on a shaft, on a spindle, and you push up on that. And if he deflects a lot, he's not very stiff. Yet if he deflects a little bit, he can be more stiff. You can actually measure the static stiffness. Dynamic stiffness is a different animal, but you can measure the static stiffness in about three minutes with a dial gauge and some kind of spring scale, luggage scale, something like that, and get a ballpark number of what your stiffness is. Stiff is good. Static stiffness is good. The higher, the higher static stiffness is good. Higher dynamic stiffness is good. They tend to go hand in hand. Things can get messy with dynamic stiffness depending on the frequency. But static stiffness, what can you do to increase your static stiffness? So what does static stiffness mean? If you have a spindle that's sticking way the hell out there, that thing is not very stiff. So that would be the second one, that one bouncing at 100 bounces per second. There are two problems with sti unstiff spindles. Number one is if you have an unstiff spindle, he's going to deflect more. If he deflects more, he's going to chatter more, or that chatter amplitude is going to be higher. That's problem number one. Problem number two is unstiff spindles bounce up and down at low frequencies. And we want them to bounce up and down at high frequencies. So if this spindle is sticking out here, we're doing cylindrical grinding. We don't want that guy to go boing, 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 boing. We want that spindle to be stiff. So he goes, my, 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 If he bounces up and down on quickly, the little scallops that are imparted into the workpiece are closer together. You also get something called attenuation or the ratio of the boat length to the wavelength that I'll talk about here. I talk about it in my course, but we want things to be stiff and we want them to bounce up and down at a high frequency. So how can we make things stiff? What can we do to make that thing stiffer? Okay. And we want it to be stiff, want it to bounce up and down at a high frequency. And what can we do to make that stiffer, especially in cylindrical ID grinding? Because cylindrical ID grinders are notoriously unstiff. Now, why are they unstiff? Because we got that shaft sticking way the hell out there, that long shaft. And that long shaft, that shaft is just not going to be very stiff compared to a cylindrical OD grinder. So there's the equation for stiffness right there. There's the equation. And that equation for stiffness so here is an ID operation with a spindle. This is an ID grinding, so he's just not very stiff. And we want to make that guy stiffer. So the basic beam theory equation for stiffness. There it is. Stiffness. K. 3, over, 3 pi over 64 E is the Young's modulus. We don't need to worry about that. Diameter to the force and length cubed. Now, what's unique about this or what's special is... The stiffness not only depends on diameter, which means if we have a bigger diameter shaft, we will have a stiffer spindle, but it depends on the diameter times the diameter times the diameter times the diameter four times. So if we make any improvements in the diameter, just make them a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker, we will get a hell of a lot stiffer spindle. It also depends on the length. So the length is on the bottom, so a longer spindle means less stiffness, and this one depends on the cube, and that's still a lot. 
So length times length times length. So any reduction in the length, even a little bit, is going to help us exponentially in terms of making things stiffer. And that E, that Young's modulus, is the inherent stiffness of the material. Yes, carbide is stiffer than steel, so that'll help us out. However, that's only E to the 1. So that doesn't have near the effect that the diameter and the length do. And there's some other drawbacks of tungsten carbide that even though it is stiffer as a higher Young's modulus, it's also a little denser, which means it's heavier, which means that lowers the natural frequency. We won't get into that here. So what we will get into here is make the damn thing bigger diameter and make the damn thing shorter. Anything you can do. If you can make him just a little bit shorter, it's going to pay off. If you cut it in half, that's an ambitious thing, but if you do cut it in half, right there, you are going to get an eightfold increase in stiffness. Why? Because two times two times two is eight. Two hundred cubes is eight. And two cubes, and that is a good investment. Even, reduce, even if you could just cut it by 10%, what is 1.1 times 1.1 times 1.1? I don't know, but it's much bigger than 1.1. But it's a cubic relation. The same with that diameter. Man, if I can make that guy beefier, make him just a little bit thicker, now i am got to the fourth. So if I can make my spindle diameter double, if I double that guy, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So if I double them, I'm going to be 16 times as stiff, or I'm going to have 1 16th of the displacement, and I'm going to get a much higher natural frequency, which is going to put the chatter marks closer together, which is what I want. So the moral of the story is just make that guy a little bit bigger in diameter. Anything you can do is going to pay off exponentially. And then if you want to get clever, there are some people who have studied beam theory. This is not the greatest picture because they got the beam not deflecting but the wheel deflecting but you get the idea people study beam theory says you know what if you're gonna beef them up you can even just beef them up further to the outside you don't even need to beef it up at the end just make them thicker near the bearings near the end of the spindle right there and that'll pay off quite a bit too so the moral of the story is just make that guy shorter make him thicker exponentially it's gonna pay off for you anything you can do Bite tooth and nail for every millimeter, every fraction of an inch when it comes to your ID grinding spindle's length and your ID grinding spindle's diameter. Make your spindle stiffer, bigger diameter, shorter length. Anything you can do will help all exponentially. And that is one aspect of chatter. Chatter is a big, nasty, complicated subject, but that is one part of the puzzle and one thing you can do to help your cause in battling chatter.